Greetings, Intrepid Deployers. My name is Allison Hill, and I'm a senior data scientist at IBM on the AI strategy and innovation team. Previous to that, I worked at our studio for three years, where I was a product manager for data science communication, working closely with the R Markdown team, and a professional educator. Uh, and for the month of December, what I've been doing is trying to pick out 12 projects that uh, new or experienced R users could try out to build simple, sometimes silly websites, uh, and earn money for charity along the way. So for the month of December, Netlify has offered to uh, donate about $150 to charity. It's been a little bit more the last few deploys I've done. Uh, it's been closer to 300, uh, I think the last two that I've done. So that's exciting. So more people are joining their challenge. Um, and I thought it was a really neat way for me to help get some money going for charity for the month of December and help users to be able to see how easy it is to be able to build and deploy a website using our Markdown, our Studio, and hopefully all the tools that you're already comfortable using. This is something that I got really good at when I was our, at our studio, and it's something that I think is fun and really worthwhile to learn about. So let's go ahead and get started because today I have picked a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is Blogdown. So uh, if you're not familiar with me, uh, I'm actually one of the co-authors of the Blogdown book. I'm also a co-author of the Blogdown package now. And in my time at our studio, I worked pretty closely with the R Markdown team, including Iwe and Christoph, to be able to make the Blogdown package uh, easy, easier for users to use and easier to debug. And so today I'm going to demo that. I'm not gonna start with a new website. I'm going to start with an existing website. It's one that I built. Uh, for a workshop about three years ago uh, in June of 2019. It's a website that I built for teaching. It was a workshop that I taught for our studio's summer internship program called Summer of Blogdown. And um, this might date me, but it was a website, a fake website, obviously, that I made for Kelly Kapowski. Who's Kelly Kapowski, you may ask? She was a character on Saved by the Bell. And as part of this workshop, I made a personal website for Kelly Kapowski. Um, it was pretty detailed. I used a lot of Wikipedia for this. Um, you can see that it's using um, a fancy Hugo theme. It's one called Academic. Um, at the time in 2019, this was my preferred Hugo theme of choice for myself, for my own personal website and when I taught. Uh, so this was the one that I taught the R Studio Summer interns how to use. Uh, so you can see that there's kind of like a nice little bio section links to her all of her Twitter accounts. Um, there's some fashion highlights, uh, very, uh, very nice fashion highlights, you know, that you can click on, scroll through. Awesome early 90s stuff there. Um, nice parallax back, background image here. Um, I even pulled some of Tiffany Amber, Thies Amber Thiessen's uh, latest books. So you can, you know, follow her on Twitter and order those from here as well. Well, contact page. Um, each of these different uh, tabs up here are also totally different pages. So, you know, she just decided to start learning R. This was one of her first projects. So Kelly Kapowski can do it. So can you. Uh, so here's a blog post written by her. She's already doing some data science and using the Verity palette, um, apparently. Uh, she's written two books, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this is her timeline from Saved by the Bell. So if you're curious, she was Kelly Kapowski from 1989 to 1993. Also revisited that in Hawaiian style, the college years, wedding in Las Vegas. And since 1994, she's been not Kelly Kapowski. Uh, there was also some co-authors on this site. So I had Jesse Spano and a little Lisa Turtle um, uh, call outs here, contact page, all of these things. So all of these things are the kinds of bells and whistles that you can expect to get in a Hugo site. It really depends on the theme that you choose. This one is academic and it's kind of more fully featured. Uh, there's no longer a Hugo Academic theme. It's now gone uh, and changed names, and it's called the Welcomey theme. Uh, but pretty similar features, pretty similar layout. It's gotten a little bit more complicated, and that's one of the reasons that I've kind of shied away from using it myself and from teaching it. Um, but I have this site. I have this Hugo Academic site built in 2019. I am almost positive that it is broken. And so what I wanted to show you today was a live reenactment of someone uh, unbreaking a blog down site. So I'm going to take the source code from Kelly Kapowski's uh, website, and I'm going to hope and pray that some of the functions that we added to the blog down package when I was working at our studio will save me here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new project from Git. Version control Git. Okay. 
And just as background, um, I have a blog post written about this topic. It's called Unbreak Your Blog Down Site. It's dated from last year. And that was when I first uh, kind of pitched the idea to eWay um, that, you know, <laughs> this GIF is fairly representative of how I was feeling. You know, I said, it's been kind of three years since we first started this whole journey with the blog down package. And, you know, I've built, worked and torched more blog down and Hugo sites than I care to admit. And I've learned a lot about troubleshooting in that time. And I feel like there's ways that we might be able to make the user experience better um, and make people less scared to, um, to start with blog down in the first place, but also to come back to their sites. We were seeing a lot of people in our GitHub issues or in social media or in blog posts, you know, kind of looking for other solutions because they were saying that their sites were unwieldy and difficult to maintain. So that was kind of the impetus behind this suite of functions that we added um, last around last Christmas time last December. Um, and this is a blog post that kind of walks you through the development of those functions and how to use them. Um, you can kind of trace it back to this uh, wish list that I originally posted in September of last year in the blog down repository where I kind of have a pretty fairly long list of, um, you know, wishes that I had to make blog down easier to use and to his credit, uh, Iwe immediately jumped on this and was checking off boxes and helping me figure out how to make it better and uh, I, I really loved being able to do that because I felt like I had uh, spent a lot of time developing a sort of specialized skill set, and I wanted to make it uh, easier for people not have to, not to have to call me up personally and help them debug their site, but to be able to essentially have me holding your hand when you're debugging your site locally. Um, this suite of functions was added in Blogdown version 1.0. Um, it was blogged about on our studio blog. This is the blog post, and so you can read a little bit more about all of the things that we added um, uh, at the time, but here's where you can see the checking functions. So with all that said, I should have my source code here. Okay, looks like I had an R profile there, which is interesting. So I had an R profile file already when I taught this uh, to my uh, learners. So uh, I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna go ahead and serve site. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> so this is what I was looking for. Error, error building site, failed to render pages. Render a page failed. Um, the layouts publication single executive template failed. Um, so if you're not familiar with Hugo, I strongly recommend if you see one of these kinds of errors to not try to debug on your own. If you don't know Hugo very well, it's, it's, it's gonna be like whack-a-mole. You're gonna fix this problem and then you'll probably serve the site again and then you'll have uh, something different pop up. Um, so what I see when I see this kind of error is that I'm, I'm typically pretty sure that this is a Hugo versioning error. So I'm going to do blog down, let's see, is it Hugo version? If I, oops. If I do Hugo version, I have Hugo version 0 0.8, 0.0 running locally. And that's what I'm trying to use to build the site. Now, when I deployed the site to Netlify, it worked, obviously, because I have a website still, right? Um, it's not been built since then, um, but at the time Netlify was able to build my site. So how I did that was I used something called a Netlify Tomal. This is a configuration file for Netlify. So you can see that I was using Hugo version 0.55.6 here. And this is likely the source of all of my problems, okay? Um, but let's let Blogdown see if it can help us out here. I'll make this bigger and I'm going to use the check site function here. And this is the one, one of the ones that we added last year to version 1.0. Okay. So when I run check site, it says running a series of automated checks for your blog down website. A successful check looks like this. And so we did that on purpose so that the successful checks were sort of like able to fade to the background. And if you had a to-do item, it was a solid dot. That's kind of meant to be a pop out for you, but we didn't want to do X's or anything like that because we didn't want people to feel punished further <laughs> by, uh, by their experience here. And then some kind of in-progress notes are usually denoted with kind of a vertical pipe there. So it says, let's check out your blog down site. So first it's opening up a file called uh, configuration.tomal, config.tomal. And um, so it tells you what file it's checking first. So anytime it gives you another um, bar like that, it's letting you know that it's checking something new. So it's checking my base URL, that's all cool. Um, actually my base URL, I think is kellykapowski.netlify.app, but we'll leave it here for now. Uh, it's checking my ignore files. I could add some things to ignore files. I could remove some files from ignore files. So there's a few to-do items there that I could do. This one is a bit of a biggie. Allow Goldmark to render raw HTML by adding this setting to config.toml. Do you want Blogdown uh, to set this for you? I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. 
So what Blogdown just did is it went into my configuration tumble and it actually edited it here. It added these lines. And so that's good. That's probably a good practice, but I don't think it's gonna be really relevant to the fact that I'm using Hugo version 0 0.55.6. That renderer for Markdown um, uh, wasn't uh, added until a later version. So I, I don't think that's my problem. I really do think I have a Hugo versioning problem. So I'm gonna scroll up to where it left me off there. Let's see. So after it did that, it said to do change some items in your Git ignore. You can safely add to your Git ignore when Netlify builds your site. You can safely add to your Git ignore all of these things. There's a lot of to do items here. None of these are going to be causing my build error though. So I'm going to keep looking. Um, found one file that should be committed in Git. Okay, so that's good. It's detecting that I haven't committed all my files. Let's go over to the Git pane. Um, Checking Hugo version. Okay. Found Hugo, you're using Hugo 0 0.8, 0 0.0. Checking the R profile for the Hugo version used by Blogdown. Hugo version is not set in your R profile. So it gives me a to do item that says set options Blogdown Hugo version to this in the R profile and restart R. Not going to do that though, because I don't actually want to level up the version of Hugo being used by Blogdown here. I want to lower it down. Um, so I'm using too high of a version and I want it to match what my Netlify version is. So next up, you see um, that it's done checking my Hugo there, but it is checking my Netlify next. And it says found Hugo version 0.55.6 in the build context of the Netlify Tomo. Exactly. It's checking that the remote and local Hugo versions match. So that means that it's checking whether Blogdown is locally using the same version of Hugo as Netlify is using in its computers in the cloud when it's building my site. And it says mismatch found. This is good. Blogdown is using Hugo version. 0 0.80.0 to build the site locally. Netlify Tomal is using Hugo version 0 0.55.6. Um, so it gives you two to-do options, um, option one and option two. One is to change the Hugo version in your Netlify Tomal to match your local version. So That would be making Netlify build with a, um, a higher version of Hugo than I'm comfortable with. The other option is to use blog down install Hugo to match the version in the Netlify Tomal and then kind of pin that in the R profile and then I'll restart ours. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, this is also a new thing that um, we introduced in the same um, uh, sweep, in the same version for Blogdown, was a way to version Hugo. And this was one of my primary pain points when I was troubleshooting, uh, is that we gave people the tools to be able to use a, um, a tool that depended on Hugo, but Hugo has versions and they break um, and they can have uh, discontinuities there. So we wanted to give people a way to be able to use specific Hugo versions based on the project they were in. Because once you had more than one blog down project, you can often get, you could often get yourself into quite the swivet if you had um, different projects that depended on different Hugo versions, it was very difficult. So I'm going to install Hugo, that version. And then what did it tell me to do? Options, blog down Hugo version. Oh. It gives me that there too. Okay, so I want to set this. The options go in the R profile file, and you can see that I already had a few other blog down options. I'm just going to kind of add this to the end there. All right, and then it told me that I needed to restart R, and the reason that I need to do this is because um, uh, R will not uh, reread the R profile file unless I restart it. So in order for blog down to recognize this R profile, I got to restart. All right. So I have restarted. My Netlify Tomal says 0 0.55.6. My R profile says 0 0.55.6. And I'm going to try to serve site. And I'm going to hope and pray that this was my problem to begin with. Yay. So we, yay, <laughs> yay. So we successfully unborked my blog down site. Um, you can see that I can recreate it here. So I'm using this old, old ass version of Hugo academic theme here, but I'm able to still build it and you could still work with this and you could just keep this going as long as you want. Netlify will always have that version of Hugo on its systems. You can always install it locally. So if you loved this site and you wanted to keep it this way and you didn't want to innovate or renovate your site, you're fine. You could just keep going with this. Um, so I'm going to make a change and see if we can convince Netlify to rebuild it just to confirm for all of us that I've completely unborked the site. So I'm going to go, I'm trying to remember what this, how this one is structured, home maybe. Uh, let's see, do I have an about? No, let's see, what's a good one? Um, oh, you know what? It's like content authors, 
Kelly, no matter what happens, keep on smiling. And when life hands a lemon, make some lemonade. Okay. Um, she is enjoying keeping her blog down site running with an old version of the Go academic theme. Thanks, Dusty Domains. Okay, I'm gonna look up Dusty Domains. So this is the website for the current effort through Netlify for being able to uh, submit a site and get money donated to charity. Where did my at? Thanks, Dusty Domains. I'll link to that there. Oops. And when I do that, it should automatically update. Oh, did I close out my local preview there? Let's see. Ah, there we go. So thanks, Dusty Domains. All right. Okay, so it's all building locally. If it's all building locally, there should be no problems when I deploy this to Netlify. So Netlify should rebuild my site for me using Hugo. Not back from the dead. I'll say dusting off Kelly's <laughs> website. Dusty domains. Not back from the dead. All right. So um, one of the things, if you're not super familiar with blog down, that you should know is that uh, when you're using Netlify, you're actually using Netlify to do a build at the same time. So what we're committing here, we're not committing any kind of built site here. Uh, you do have the source files located inside of uh, content folders. They're usually markdown files or HTML files. And then what Netlify is doing behind the scenes is actually building our site for us. You can't see the site here. There's no like deployed site. Like when we did book down, for example, the default was underscore book to have the um, rendered output uh, in a site locally and distill its underscore site. But for um, for blog down, there's no longer even a uh, a folder where this is. It used to be public, but that's the um, that's the implicit uh, output directory for a a blog down site. So let's go check out Netlify and see what it's doing with Kelly's site. Kelly Capels, oh no, failed. Build image no longer supported. Ah, okay, because I was using an old build image. So let's go back to deploy settings. Let's see. I think I did get a notice that I had some like this, but aha, build image. Let's do Ubuntu Focal. See if that works. Okay, we go back to deploys, and I'm going to trigger deploy here. Um, deploy to site. So let's see if that works. I think so far this is looking better, I think, let's hope. Okay, it's installing Hugo 0 0.55.6, that's a good sign. So it has detected that I wanted that. That's looking good, that's a typical Netlify build for uh, Hugo messaging. This is what it should look like, this little kind of nice markdown table. Deploy site, site is live. Let's go check out our girl next door. Voila. All right, so we have dusted off kellykapowski.netlify.app. I'm going to submit it to Dusty Domains. And these are the charities that Netlify is going to be donating to throughout this challenge. So Black Girls Code, STEM Tank, Resilient Coders, Code 2040. Um, and you can see all the different uh, companies that have decided to join Netlify in this. So I think that's really great. I think it's a really uh, fun thing to do. So I'm going to submit. And I'm going to turn off my screen sharing for just one moment while I type in my email address. Okay. One second. I'm so happy that Kelly Kapowski gets to be in here. I hope she makes it into the showcase. Man, that would be exciting. So your, I first purchased this domain was 2019. All right, I just shipped a two-year-old dusty domain on Netlify. 
my site has contributed $350 to charity, so it's up from $300. Uh, all right, pretty exciting. Well, I hope that this gave you some tools for being able to um, go back to an old blog down site that you might need to dust off and see if you can fix it, see what kinds of things that you can um, troubleshoot your way out of now using those new uh, checking functions. And I'll put all the resources that I used here in the, um, in the notes below the video. Um, so thank you for joining me and I look forward to next time. Bye.